to show you this back panel of this MPC 4000 Akai and the reason why you should buy one. Right. First of all, as you can see, the back of this thing is humongous. I call this machine monsterish, yeah? Very, very monstrous. It's got so many connections at the back here. If you could compare it to a car, you might be able to compare it to a Pagani Zonda, the rear end. Anyway, first of all, right here we got we got the little section here for the for the turntable right here. So we got we got some jack outputs here. And we got a we got a ground here for your ground for your for your turntable. So you can use this for CD players, other stuff like that as well. Directly below that, we've got a MIDI in and another MIDI in. So we've got MIDI in one and MIDI in two. Then next to that, you've got four MIDI outs, A, B, C, and D. So you can connect these. You can have four MIDI instruments connected here, which is a brilliant thing about this machine. Right, above that, you've got mic in. You've got a mic input, an XLR input, line input here. So you've got line or mic, but it's XLR. And then here, you've got your outputs. You've got main outputs here. So you've got two XLR outputs, as you can see. And then you've got two jack quarter inch jack outputs here so basically you've got two stereo outputs which is brilliant underneath that you've got a usb you've got a usb output here that connects to the pc and you can control that you can control the mpc 4000 with a program called axis and you can exchange files to and from the computer and edit them in the computer and send them back to the MPC and stuff like that. Next to that, you've got a SCSI output, so you can connect. You can connect um, disk drives, external disk drives, SCSI disk drives to that. Then here, in this slot here, this is this is a slot here. I've got an ADAT card, so I can connect to ADAT mixer to this here in and out a in a out but you can change this over you can put you can put an extra eight outputs so here i've got eight individual outputs analog outputs right here which is brilliant so you've got here you've got foot switch two foot switches one and two then here you've got SMPTE in and out and then here you've got a digital in and out as you can see here digital in out and here you've got a word clock in let's switch next to it so that's basically it that's that's not basic it's very complex but as you can see that is one reason why you should get an MPC 4000 Akai. Brilliant machine. So much connectivity at the back. So basically with the MIDI's, like I said, you can connect four MIDI instruments to that. And then you've got two MIDI ins. So you can have clock. You can clock it. You can do all sorts of stuff with it, with the MIDI. You can control the whole studio. Basically, if you've got four, if you've got, four machines midi instruments synthesizers you might have another sampler you can run it all through this machine here brilliant machine all right this is just an add-on these eight outputs here they can be used individually as mono outs or as pairs and this mic line input here 
these two mic line inputs are actually XLR and quarter inch jack. So you can stick this, look, I'll show you. That goes in there like that as well. So you can stick in the quarter inch jack and an XLR. You ever seen that before? This is the front panel of the Akai MPC 4000. It's gonna take you through it briefly and then I'm gonna zoom in on the parts and break them down for you, yeah? So basically this is the, this is the section for the Q-Link section here. Here we've got some pad buttons, bank buttons here. We've got the pads here, we've got the transport panel here, and you've got the like, menu buttons here, option buttons. You've got some extra other buttons. You've got the numeric pad here. Here we've got the screen, it moves back and forth, as you can see. And you can you can adjust the color here, the contrast. And that's it. This is the Q-Link section. You've got two faders here. You've got the buttons to activate the faders. And then you've got four knobs as well. You've got four buttons to activate the knobs. Here, this is um sequence. So you, it's got like 16 or 32 parts and you can program each part of the sequence with a separate Q-Link effect, whichever effect you desire to put on the Q-Link. You can use this during sampling as well. This section here, Q-Link. So you can put any effect on and you can mess around with the faders in real time or the knobs in real time and record it. So that's a brilliant section. Q-Link. All right, and this next section. This button here is for the Q-Link sequence. Just what I spoke about a minute ago where you can have 32 or 16 different segments and you can time each one with the Q link So that's for that. This here is the pad assign button You can assign whatever note you want to whatever pad you want and you can save it Here you got the full level that's for the pads you've got 16 pads here. So if you want them to all bang at the full level That's the button right there Here you got 16 levels which is you can take any one of the pads and you can turn it into a chromatic note with 16 levels and you set a low and a high and it gives you 16 different notes or you can do velocity as well. Yeah, velocity or tuning. Here you've got the erase button. You can hold this button down and you can erase in real time or you can select an actual event on the screen and erase it here you got the note repeat so when you got a sequence going and you're you're in play it only works when you when it's in play that's the, that's the one thing about the 4000 it, it 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 only does it while it's playing so you have to press play and then press this and the light will come on and then you can select whatever timing you want the note to repeat at yeah so here you got the pad banks you got pad a b c d e and f banks so on each one of these banks you got 16 pads so if you got a program you could have loads of chops in the program but the thing is, you can only have 32 chops in a single program. Okay. Here we've got the next sequence button. So you can go on to the next sequence. You can program that button. And here you've got track mute. So you can mute. You can mute whatever track you want to mute from here. Even though you can do it in the main screen, you can do it here as well. There's a button for it. This is the screen, it's got a decent screen. 
decent graphics on it. It's got a contrast knob there. You can turn the contrast up and down. And it's got these six F buttons connected to it, which work the bottom half of the, the, the screen here. Will, depending on what you're on, on the MPC, it will have different options here at the bottom of the screen. And you can select them with one of these buttons here, these F buttons. Here we've got 16 pads. One, two, three, four, all the way up to 16. You can hit these, nice. But three of these pads have got different functions when you're on the sample screen, when you're on the sample editing screen. You've got a loop pad here, and then you've got a two pad and a from pad, and this pad here is a play pad. It plays different from all the rest of these 12 pads here. These pads, 12 pads will play the same, but these four have special functions in the sample screen, sample editing screen. All right, this section here, you've got a gain switch here, high or low gain switch. Here you've got a recording gain, so you can adjust this while you're sampling for your input. Here we've got the main volume. Here we've got numeric pad here. One, one to zero, the enter and a plus and minus here. So you can enter in your numeric values like for your sample or whatever, whatever has a numeric value, you can edit it with this. Now here you got all the option buttons here. So here you got record, that's how you record your sample with this button. This is your sample page editing button. Here's your program button here. This is your multi button. This is your mixer. You got mixer, effects, this is your save, load, global button, song, miscellaneous, MIDI, your main screen button, sequence edit, and step edit. Yeah. All right, this is the last part of the front panel now. So here we've got the timing correct button. This is for your timing and swing settings. Next to this here, we've got the window button. This button here takes you into extra options on the screen. So if you're in something and you press this window button, it usually takes you into another screen with more options in it. This here is the master tempo button. This button is for if you want to set all your sequences to the same tempo, you press this button here and set the tempo on the screen. Here you have a shift button that works alongside this rotary knob here and buttons here. Here you've got your undo button. So if you've recorded something in a sequence, you can undo it with this here. You just press this once or press it once again to redo. Here you've got tap tempo. So obviously you know what tap tempo is. You tap that a few times in time to whatever you're, you're trying to get the tempo of and it displays it here on the screen. It changes the tempo on the screen as you tap. Here you've got the, the transport panel. So we've got the record button here, which just records, straight records, records over. So if you record with this and then you, you record again with this, it will record over what you've just done with the stuff that you just recorded. So this is called overdub. This is the button that adds to the recording when you use this button here. Stop, play, and you've got play start. This plays from the beginning. So every time you play this, it plays from the beginning. This plays from wherever you stopped it from. Here you've got the step buttons, back and forward, one step. You've got locate button here, go to, and then you've got the bar, Back or forward, one bar. Here you got this rotary knob here. This is for options and stuff on the screen. Turn this, and then with that, you got four arrow keys here. One, two, three, and four. They take you around the screen as well for the options and stuff like that. And then you got these block cursors. They, they take bigger steps than these. So these take smaller steps. These take bigger steps. 
that's it. That's that's the front panel. Now this is the lower panel. As you can see, it's got a USB at the front as well, as well as the back. So this has got a USB input at the at the front and an output at the back. It, you can put in USB stick or connect whatever USB here, which is an excellent thing. You got phones out here. See the phones out, and then you got you got the level here. You can adjust the level of the phones, headphones out. Last but not least, it has a CD-ROM as well, with volume on it, and a headphones out, a mini jack on the CD-ROM, which is brilliant. So you can sample from that. You can download the whole track into the bank. Like you can load the whole song, track by track. Or you can sample whatever piece you want out of the track because you can fast forward and skip tracks and all that as well. So as you can see, MPC 4000 is a complete machine. Okay, so that's basically the Akai MPC 4000. The rear panel, all the connections, and the front panel, and all the buttons. I'm going to be doing a part two video on the Akai MPC 4000 next, in my, one of my next videos. But I'm going to break down all the functions individually in the parts. So this is part one for why you should buy an Akai MPC 4000 monster machine. Buy one if you, if you can. Peace.